Good morning, my dear students. I am Dr. Yam Venkat. Welcome to my Anirudha tutorials. I teach zoology for the NEET aspirants All India Medical Entrance Examination. So, in my previous classes, I discussed about the musculoskeletal system up to the muscle contraction, types of the muscle fibers, and the Cori cycle, etc. In this class, I am going to deal with the skeletal system of human beings. Skeletal system majorly contain two connective tissues. Two connective tissues. One is the bone. Second one, the cartilage. Bone and cartilage are two connective tissues. Listen, in the other classes, uh, I mean in the structural organization, I told you that there are some specialized connective tissues. There are some specialized connective tissues. Specialized connective tissues. Specialized connective tissues are three. One is bone. Two, cartilage, and three, blood. These are three specialized connective tissues. Among these three, bone and cartilage are the specialized connective tissue. Study of the bone is called as the osteology. Study of the bone is osteology. And study of the cartilage is chondrology. Study of the cartilage is chondrology. Bone is the connective tissue which is a hardest connective tissue. This is the most hardest connective tissue in our body is the bone. So bone Matrix is very important. Matrix of bone is non pliable. Matrix is very hard, it is non pliable because, because bone contains the calcium salts. Bone contains the calcium salts. Due to the presence of the calcium salts in the bone, matrix is non-pliable. It is most important. Bone matrix is non-pliable because of the calcium salts. But the matrix of the cartilage is pliable. Matrix is pliable. Matrix is pliable. Because cartilage contains the chondritin salts. Chondritin salts. Cartilage contains the chondritin salts. Because of the chondritin salts in the cartilage, the cartilage is pliable. Cartilage matrix is pliable. Bone matrix is non pliable because of the calcium salts in the bone, chondritin salts in the cartilage. On coming to the human skeletal system, bones in adults, in adults, number of the bones are 206. But in the embryo, during the early embryo, number of the bones are approximately 300. So, in the adults, as many as 206 number of the bones are present in the human body. Among these 206, I am going to classify the types of the bones, I mean the skeletal system. Skeletal system, human skeletal system is of two parts. One is the axial skeleton. Axial skeleton. 
second the appendicular skeleton appendicular skeleton these are two types of the skeletal system one is the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton the parts of the axial skeleton are one the skull skull is the part of the axial skeleton one the vertebral column vertebral column three sternum one more ribs these are the parts of the axial skeleton skull contain total number of the bones are 29 along with the bones which are associated with the sense organs i mean if you say here here contain 3 plus 3 number of the sense sensory bones are present they are here as skulls along with the sensory structures skull bones are totally 29 vertebral column contain total number of bones are 26 sternum is equals to only one bone ribs are totally 12 pairs is equals to 24 number of the ribs are 12 pairs 24 sternum 1 vertebral column number of vertebrae in the human beings in adult stage are 26 skull bones along with the associated sensory sense organs bones are 29 therefore total number of the bones in the axial skeleton are Eighty. Number of the bones in the yes. Number of the bones in the axial skeleton are eighty. Skull bones are twenty-nine. Vertebral column twenty-six. Sternum one. Rings are twelve pairs. Is equals twenty-four. Is equals to eighty. And now the parts of the appendicular skeleton. Appendicular skeleton is formed by the four limbs. Four limbs. We have a pair of the four limbs. On one side, each hand contains thirty bones, and one more hand contains thirty bones. Number of the bones in the four limbs of man are totally sixty. Number of bones in the four limbs of man are sixty. And hind limbs, okay, four limbs are supported by the pectoral girdles. Pectoral girdle. In the pectoral girdle, on one side. Number of the bones in the pectoral girdle are two. Therefore, total number of the bones in the pectoral girdle are two plus two is equal to four. On one side, pectoral girdle two bones, two bones. Totally is equal to four bones. And coming to the hind limbs, hind limbs. Each hind limb contains thirty bones. Thirty plus thirty is equal to sixty bones in the total hind limbs of man. In the legs of man. And hind limbs are supported by the pelvic girdles. Hind limbs are supported by the pelvic girdles. On each side of the pelvic girdle, the pelvic girdle bones are also called as the hip bones. Hip bones can be called as the coxal elements or coxal bones. Hip bones or coxal bones are forming the pelvic girdle. On one side, the hip bone is equal to one. And another side, hip bone is equal to one. Therefore, one plus one is equal to two number of the pelvic girdle bones. The total number of the bones in the pelvic girdle of man are two. Coxal bones on one side, one. Coxal bone on another side, one. Total number of the bones in the appendicular skeleton of man are is equal to one twenty six. Number of bones in the appendicular skeleton are one twenty six. One twenty six. In the axial skeleton are eighty. Eighty plus one twenty six is equal to two not six in the entire adult human beings. And now I am going to discuss with the uh, axial skeleton. The first part of the axial skeleton is the skull. Skull of man. Axial skeleton. Skull. Pause. Then I am going to deal with the skull of man. The first part in the axial skeleton is skull.
the human skull this is the part skull which sits into the vertebral column fixing into the vertebral column with a pair of the occipital condyles therefore when the skull contain a pair of occipital condyles a pair of occipital condyles with the help of the occipital condyles skull fixing into the vertebral column sits into the vertebral column therefore therefore human skull is dicondyric skull human skull is a dicondyric skull not only the human skull all mammalian skulls are dicondyric therefore human skull mammalian skull is dicondyric because a pair of the occipital condyles are present and the into the skull the parts of the skull one the cranium cranium number of the bones in the cranium are Eight. Number of the cranial bones are eight. Out of the eight cranial bones, we can see one frontal bone, frontal bone. See, this is the frontal bone. It forms the anterior floor of the cranium. Frontum. frontal bones forms the anterior floor of the cranium anterior floor of cranium is formed by the frontal bone one after that frontal these are a pair of the parietal bones this is one parietal another parietal bone these are a pair of parietals a pair of parietal bones and these parietal bones are forming the major roof of the cranium major roof of the cranium parietal bones and after that this is a temporal bone and one more a temporal bone a pair of the temporals a pair of temporal bones a pair of the temporal bones forms the lateral roof of the cranium and the side of the cranium roof is formed by the a pair of the parietals and one more one occipital bone one occipital bone frontal is single Occipital bone forms the posterior posterior floor of the cranium is formed by the occipital bone. And one more, there is a single bone. It is a spinoid bone. Spinoid bone. Very much important. This is present at the middle of base of skull and the middle of the base of the skull spinoid bone is present and this spinoid bone is a keystone bone spinoid bone is a keystone bone in the cranium i mean only cranium not in the skull 
total in the cranial elements number of the cranial bones are eight out of eight cranial bones keystone bone is the spinine because why it is assertion assertion spinine bone is the keystone bone of the cranium the reason is spinine spinine bone articulates with spinoid bone articulates with remaining remaining all bones of cranium all bones of cranium it can articulate it can touch with the remaining all bones of the cranium hence it is called as a spinoid bone and one more bone is the ethmoid bone ethmoid bone and this ethmoid bone okay it is also single bone ethmoid bone it is present at the middle of anterior part of cranial floor middle of the anterior part of the cranial floor is the ethmoid bone so 1 plus 2 3 plus 2 5 6 7 8 8 total number of the bones in the cranium are 8 number of the bones in the cranium of man are 8 one frontal a pair of the parietals a pair of temporals single occipital bone And the spinoid bone, ethmoid bone, totally eight. And one more important, occipital bone is the bone. It has a large aperture. And the back, this is the occipital bone. Occipital bone has a large aperture. It has a large aperture. It has a large aperture, occipital bone, and the large aperture main is the foramina magna. Foramina magna is the aperture of occipital bone. Through the foramina magna, through the foramina magna, the spinal cord comes out. Spinal cord. emerges out you know middle of the leg continues as the spinal cord but the middle of the leg is a part of the hind brain brain part and the spinal cord comes out through a large aperture and that large aperture name is foramina magna listen me foramina magna is the aperture of a occipital bone through which spinal cord comes out these are all about the cranial bones but between the cranial bones there are the joints the joints present between the cranial bones generally the joints they are present between the cranial bones joints generally present between the cranial bones are called as the sutures sutures are a type of the fibrous joints i discuss it in the next period but the suture is a faint line between the two bones it is a mobile joint it is a synarthros synarthros means a completely non mobile For example, of the sutures, example of the sutures, you know, P O L pole pole between the parietal bone and occipital bone between the parietal and occipital bone. So this is the parietal bone and this is the occipital bone. There is a suture at the mid vertex. so between the parietal and occipital the suture is the lumboid suture 
lambda suture in the suture between the parietal and also occipital bone and between the parietal and also frontal between the parietal and frontal there is another suture is coronal suture coronal suture so generally between the cranial bones to regular cranial bones there are sutures sutures are joints example parietal occipital between the parietal occipital there is a joint in the lambda suture between the parietal frontal there is a suture coronal suture which side go to the cranium and one more part of the skull is the facial elements one more part of the skull is the facial element pass then okay then one more part of the skull first one the cranium first one the cranium number of the cranial elements are eight second the facial elements facial elements are 14 facial means these are facing towards face therefore these are the facial bones in the face region facial elements are totally 14 in number see this diagram let me try to draw the diagram of the skull these are the upper is the teeth and the lower is the teeth this is one bone in the skull and this bone is the hyoid bone hyoid bone listen hyoid bone is the only one bone which is not at all articulating to any other bone of the skull it is free not articulating it cannot articulates with any bone hyoid bone 
and the higher bone is present on the base of buccal cavity on the base of the buccal cavity and the higher bone is u shaped higher bone is u shaped this is higher bone u shaped bone not in contact with any other bone it is present at the base of the buccal cavity but the function of the higher bone generally higher bone helps in kept opening of it kept opening of larynx it helps in opening of the larynx this is all about the higher bone these are the teeth these are the teeth in the nose we have the facial element and this facial element bone this is the facial element bone called as nasal bones these are the nasal bones in the nose in the nose nasal bone there is one there is a bone and this bone is the ethmoid bone it is present at the middle of the anterior part of the cranial cavity and this is one of the smallest bone in the facial elements i repeat the smallest bone in the cranial elements only in the facial elements smallest bone these are called as the uh, lacrimal bones these are a pair of the lacrimals on both the sides this is the ethmoid spinal bone as i told you earlier spinal bone is the keystone bone which can articulate with the remaining all bones of the cranium so this is the frontal bone this is the frontal bone and this is the parietal bone parietal bone and one more is the temporal bone and this is obviously the occipital bone occipital bone so occipital has a pair of the condyles see this this is a condyle on the one side there are a pair of the occipital condyles and that is why our skull is a condylic skull this is the occipital condyle occipital condyle okay these are the zygomatics these are zygomatics a pair of cheek bones are here zygomatic bones are also called as the cheek bones zygomatic bones a pair of the facial element they form the cheek that is why they are called as the cheek bones 
cheek bones and this is the upper jaw maxilla maxilla forms the upper jaw and this is the lower jaw this is the lower jaw and this lower jaw is the mandible lower jaw is the mandible upper jaw maxilla zygomatic etc so number of facial elements are put in maybe in this diagram i cannot represent all the protein okay lacrimal bones are part of the facial bones zygomatic and the maxillary bones mandibular and the nasal septal bones nasal concave bones and the vomer bone vomer also is part of the facial bone as many as 14 number of the bones are present in the facial elements but here hyoid bone is it is not at all articulating to any other bone in the uh, facial elements as well as in the skull it is u shaped bone it is present at the base of the buccal cavity it is helping for the kept opening of the larynx mandible it is very important it is the strongest bone mandible is the strongest bone in the facial elements mandible also u shaped like hyoid mandible also u shaped but mandible is mobile bone mandible is a mobile bone so these are the facial elements some of the facial elements but remember number of the facial bones are 14 and coming to in the facial elements there are some bones which are associated to the sense organs for example if we say nose is a sensory structure nose contains the nasal septal bones nasal concave bones etc but eye has the eye orbit this is the eye orbital bone it covers the protects the eyeball inside so coming to the ear most important there are ear ossicles ear contain the ear ossicles ear contain the ear ossicles but remember ear ossicles are present in only middle ear ear ossicles are present in the middle ear ear ossicles are present in the middle ear not in the external not in the inner ear middle ear contain the ear ossicles number of ear ossicles are on one side in one ear middle ear three in another ear three number of the ear ossicles are six number of the ear ossicles are six three plus three is equal to six so what are the three ear ossicles present in the middle ear of the human beings not only in the human beings and also in all mammals there are three ear ossicles i read the name of the ear ossicles here one is the malleus 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 is commonly called as the hammer bone malleus is commonly called as the hammer bone one incus incus is the anvil bone incus is the anvil bone common name and one more stapes stapes you know stapes is the smallest bone in the human body smallest in the human body stapes bone but stapes is commonly called as the stether so in the bracket diagram i have given the common name on one side see malleus is called as the hammer bone incus is the anvil bone stapes is the stether bone but malleus is a modified it is a modified articular bone it is a modified right here malleus is a modified articular bone 
Incus is a modified quadrate pronopascal. Stapes is a modified hyomandibula. These are three ear aspects in one ear. I repeat most important. Malleus is the modified articular bone. Incus is the modified quadrate bone. Stapes is the modified hyomandibular bone. Malleus is commonly called as hammer bone. Incus is commonly called as anvil bone. Stapes is commonly called as a stirrup bone. This is all about the cranial elements are 8, facial elements are 14, and the total number of the skull bones are 29. If you see, I can calculate the number of the skull bones are 29. Cranial elements are 8. Cranium contain 8. Number of the facials are 14. Hyoid bone is 1. And the three ear ossicles, ear ossicles are 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. Number of the bones in the skull of man are 29. 6 plus 1, 7, plus 4, 11, plus 8, 19. 1 plus 1 is equal to 29. Number of the bones in the skull of man are 29. Don't say uh, 21 or uh, 20. Because you have to calculate the ear skills also. Because they are parts of the skull, they are associated with the ear. Ear is a part of the skull. Ear bones are parts of the skull. So, this is our identity the skull bones. And coming to one more part. Yes, now I am going to discuss about the vertebral column. First one I have discussed about the skull over next vertebral column. Vertebral column, yes, it is a single column, but it has number of bones. Total number of bones in the vertebral column of man are 26. They are called as vertebrae. 26 vertebrae are present. In the human vertebral column. What are these vertebrae? For example, this is the human skull. I told you there are a pair of the occipital condyles. These are a pair of occipital condyles. Occipital condyles, a pair. That is why our skull is a diconic skull. And coming to the vertebral column, these are vertebrae. Okay. 
what even karna okay these are a pair of the hospital condoms one condom and one more a pair of the hospital condoms that is why our skull is like on this vertebral column is not a straight column it's not straight it has curvatures you see there are cervical vertebrae the first vertebrae are the cervical vertebrae 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 these are first seven vertebrae are cervical vertebra seven cervical vertebrae seven number of cervical vertebra present in the neck of man in the neck region seven cervical vertebrae are present out of seven C what is the first vertebra this is the first vertebra i mean the first vertebra is the atlas atlas is the first vertebra second vertebra is the axis second vertebra is axis You see, these are the first vertebra and second vertebra. But axis contain axis contain a process is called as the odontoid process. Odontoid process. For example, this is the axis. This is the axis bone, and this is the atlas bone. First vertebra is atlas, second vertebra is axis. But axis has a odontoid process like this, and this odontoid process of the axis fixes into a canal of atlas, and that canal is the odontoid canal. So odontoid process of axis fixes into the odontoid canal of the atlas. Therefore. atlas rotates over the axis where axis bone is always stationary atlas is rotating around the axis atlas rotates around the axis so odontoid process in the process of axis the axis contain the odontoid process but atlas has atlas has odontoid canal atlas has odontoid canal this is the name of first vertebra and the second vertebra second vertebra is the axis first vertebra is the atlas first vertebra is atlas second vertebra is axis remaining seven number of bones totally seven number of cervical vertebrae are present in the human beings generally in mammals most of the mammals contain the seven number of cervical vertebrae when coming to there are other vertebrae in the thoracic region for example this is the thoracic region okay vertebral column in the thoracic region there is a curvature thoracic region there is a curvature and that curvature is towards front It it is like this. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. These are twelve number of the thoracic vertebrae. Twelve thoracic vertebrae. It has the curvature towards front. And coming to thoracic vertebra, the same thoracic vertebra region, we have the sternum and the ribs. So twelve pairs of ribs are 
articulating with the vertebral column you know our ribs are bicephalic on back side not on the front side so these ribs are binding to the vertebral column at the thoracic region only see rib on back side it has a bicephalic bifid it is a bifid rib attaching to the vertebral column like this this is the attachment for that attachment this thoracic vertebra has two facets one facet is for the upper process of the rib capitulum capitular process and the lower process is the tuberculum of the rib therefore for the articulation of the capitulum and the tuberculum there are two facets there are just like sockets therefore the sockets are present for the only thoracic vertebra sockets are present I mean the facets. Thoracic vertebra has a facet for the articulation of for the articulation of bicephalic ribs. On dorsal side. So these are twelve member of the thoracic vertebrae. Next one are the lumbar vertebra. Lumbar vertebrae, it has the curvature towards back side. There is a curvature on back side. Okay, lumbar vertebrae one, two, three, four, five. Member of the lumbar vertebrae are five. Five lumbar vertebrae. in the human body these are the largest vertebrae and also strongest vertebra largest vertebra and strongest vertebra and also they are free vertebra these are Free vertebra, lumbar vertebrae are five. And coming to one more, sacral vertebra. There is only one bone in the other stage. This is the sacrum, single sacrum. And one more last vertebra is the coccyx. Single coccyx. But single sacrum in that stage, but this is fused by five bones. Five vertebrae are fused. Five vertebrae are fused to form one. Coccyx, even though this is single, but four vertebrae are fused to form one. Five are fused to form one, four are fused to form one. Therefore, number of the vertebrae in the upper vertebral column of the adult human beings are. Yes, start. So, number of the vertebrae in adults. See, adults. But in the embryonic stage, number of cervical, thoracic. lumbar sacral and caudal these are the types of vertebrae from top to bottom cervical vertebrae are 7 thoracic are 12 lumbar are 5 sacral are 1 caudal are 1 therefore total number of the vertebrae in adult human beings are 1 1 2 5 7 2 9 Nine plus seven, twenty-six. Two plus one, one plus one, twenty-six. Number of the vertebrae in adult case are twenty-six. But during the embryo, it can be asked that number of vertebrae in the unfused condition before the fusion. I mean during the embryo genesis. I can write here not only the embryo, and this is during the unfused condition. 
unfusion condition. Before they fuse, how many number of vertebrae are present? But after fusion, number of the vertebrae are 26. So, number of the cervical vertebrae are as it is. There is no change in the cervical vertebra as it is same in the embryo and also in adults. Thoracic vertebrae also 12. Lumbar vertebrae same 5 in number. But the sacral vertebrae, as I told you, they were 5 in number. Cordal vertebrae, they were 4 in number. Therefore, number of the vertebra before fusion, unfused condition are totally how many? After fusion in the adult states are 26. Before fusion, unfused condition are 4 plus 5, 9, 14, 16, and 21. 2 plus 1, 3, 31. Therefore, number of vertebrae in the unfused condition are 31, but fused condition are 26, I mean in the other stage. This is very much important. And coming to the vertebral column, the main bone of the vertebral column is the centrum. This is the main bone. On either side of the centrum bone, these are the neural arches. Here, yeah, neural arches are present. But this is the main bone in the centrum. This is the centrum bone. If you look at the centrum, there is a canal. Can you see it, please? Centrum bone, this is centrum, centrum, centrum bone. But centrum bone has a central canal. This is the canal of the centrum. Am I visible? This is the centrum bone. Centrum bone has a central canal. I write the canal name of the centrum. Main bone of the vertebra is the centrum. Main bone of vertebra is centrum. The main bone of vertebra is called as centrum bone. Because it is at the center of the vertebral column, this is the centrum bone. And this centrum bone has a canal. This is the canal. Centrum bone has a canal called as neural canal. Neural canal is the canal of centrum. Neural canal is the canal of centrum. What is present inside it? See, neural canal accommodates neural canal accommodates spinal cord. Therefore, inside the neural canal of centrum, spinal cord is present. We cannot see spinal cord externally, that is present embedded inside the uh, neural canal of the centrum. But the spinal cord has a central canal. What is the canal of spinal cord? It is called as a central canal. Inside the central canal of the spinal cord, the cerebrospinal fluid is present. Cerebrospinal fluid is present inside the central canal of the spinal cord. Just like it is a pen. Pen. Okay. Can I have a pen here? Could you please give me a pen? Thank you. This is the Pen, yeah. Outer plastics is the centrum bone. This is the plastics centrum bone. But this centrum has centrum has the canal. This is the canal of the centrum. Can you see it? Yeah. This is the neural canal. Neural canal of the centrum accommodates the spinal cord. This is the refill, yeah. Refill is this plastics is the uh, spinal cord. But spinal cord is the center. At the center of the spinal cord, there is a canal that is called as the central canal. Therefore, my conclusion is 
neural canal is the canal of the vertebral column through the neural canal through the neural canal spinal cord passes but the spinal cord has a central canal through the central canal cerebrospinal fluid passes this is an about the relation between the vertebral column and also the spinal cord this is about the vertebral column therefore what are the functions of vertebral column the functions are very much important vertebral column has functions vertebral column helps in the helps in the attachment of skull it bears the weight of the skull one more vertebral column protects the spinal cord vertebral column protects the spinal cord vertebral column gives a definite body posture definite shape of the body body posture and vertebral column helps in attachment of muscles it gives the site for the attachment to muscles for the binding of the musculature it gives a definite body posture helps in the protection of the spinal cord helps in suspension of the skull these are the functions of the vertebral column so so far i discussed about the skull and the vertebral column and coming to one more the sternum yes. and now i am going to discuss about one more part of the axial skeleton in the sternum number of the bones in the sternum are only one location of the sternum on the on the mid ventral side on the mid ventral side of only in the thoracic region this thoracic region and the mid ventral thoracic region we have the same in sternum sternum bones are only one but the parts of the sternum are three this is the first part of the sternum this is the first part of the sternum called manubrium this is called as manubrium manubrium is the first part of the sternum after that this is the body second part is the body and the last part of the sternum is the xiphoid bone xiphoid cartilage it is a xiphoid process in my previous i have discussed about one more and right process Rhomboid process is a process of the axis bone. Rhomboid process is the process of the axis bone. The rhomboid process articulates with the rhomboid canal of the atlas. Therefore, atlas rotates. Here is a zipoid process. Actually, it is a zipoid process is nothing but a cartilage, but a part of the sternum. So, these are the three parts of the sternum. The structure of the sternum is over. 
Structurally, sternum contains a single bone, but parts are membrane, body, and zipoid process. Present at the midventral region of the thoracic cavity, the purpose of the sternum gives site for the attachment of the ribs and front side. I mean, on the ventral side, this is the sternum bone. Ribs are articulating with the sternum. And one more, the parts of the uh, axial skeleton are the ribs. Ribs. Totally 12 pairs of ribs are present. Is equals to 24. Number of the bones in the ribs are 24. 12 pairs is equals to 24. So, for example, this is the front view, means this is sternum on front side. We have the vertebral column on the back side. See, this is the vertebral column on the mid dorsal line. A vertebra. These are vertebrae, but they, these are called as intervertebral discs. Inter vertebral discs. Okay, this is the extension of the vertebral column. So, this is the vertebral column and this is the sternum. Between these two, the ribs are articulated. But I have to classify the ribs. Ribs are two types. Ribs are two types. I remove this. Ribs are two types. Ribs are classified into two types. One are the true ribs. And second are the false ribs. True ribs and false ribs are two types of the ribs. True ribs are the first seven pair of the ribs. The first seven pairs of ribs are true ribs. And these first seven pair of ribs are directly attaching to the sternum. And that is why these first pair, seven pair of ribs are not only true pairs, true ribs, and also all are called as the vertebro sternal ribs. Because these are the ribs which are articulating between the vertebral column and the sternum, vertebral sternal ribs. First seven pairs. See this. First pair, second pair, third pair, fourth pair, fifth pair, sixth pair, and the seventh pair. I read here this is the seventh pair of the ribs. Sixth pair, fifth pair, fourth, third pair, second pair, and first pair. Same. They are present on both the sides. I have drawn only on one side. So these are first seven pair of ribs are between the vertebral column and the sternum. Vertebral column and the sternum. All are called as the vertebral sternal ribs. But false pairs are two types. False ribs are two types. One are called either vertebro chondral ribs. Vertebro chondral ribs, definitely these all ribs are articulated in the vertebral column. Chondral means cartilage because study of the cartilage is the chondral. See this. What are the vertebral chondral ribs? The vertebral chondral ribs are the ribs which are 8th pair, 9th pair and 10th pair. 8th pair, 9th pair, 
and tenth pair of the ribs. These are three pairs. These are three pairs of ribs or vertebral column. Why they are named as vertebral column? See this. This is the eighth pair, ninth pair, and tenth pair. I read here. This is the eighth pair, ninth pair, and tenth pair of the ribs. These three pairs of ribs are they are not articulating with the sternum directly because they are touching with the seventh rib. They are articulating with the seventh rib. Eighth, ninth, tenth pair of ribs are not articulating with the sternum, but they are touching with the seventh sternum with the help of a cartilage called the hyaline cartilage. This is the hyaline cartilage. It's a hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is a cartilage type between the eighth, ninth, tenth pair of the ribs, vertebral chondral ribs with the seventh rib. It's a bone. These are bones. Between these two bones, there is a cartilage called as the hyaline cartilage. It's a cartilage joint between these two. Therefore. These are three pairs of ribs. Eighth, ninth, tenth pair of ribs are named as the vertebral chondral because definitely they are articulating with the vertebral column on the back side and dorsal. But on the ventral side, they are not touching to the sternum, but they are touching to the seventh pair of the ribs. That is why between the seventh pair and these three pairs of ribs, there is a cartilage, the hyaline cartilage. Hence, it is called the vertebral chondral. Vertebral chondral on back side, vertebral column. And ventral side cartilage, vertebral cartilage. Remaining two pairs of ribs, they are the twelfth pair and the thirteenth pair. Sorry, eleventh pair and twelfth pair of ribs. These are two pairs of ribs, which are not even the vertebral sternum and also vertebral column, but they are false but free. Free and floating ribs. They are free floating ribs. They are not touching to any other structure. So see this. This is the eleventh pair and twelfth pair. I write this is the eleventh pair. Okay, continue. This is the eleventh pair and twelfth pair. They are not touching to the yeah, any other part. They are called as the free floating and also false ribs. Therefore, ribs are twelve pairs. My conclusion is, my conclusion is, all the ribs are, all the ribs are, all the ribs are false. Question regarding the ribs. One. Wow. All ribs are attached to all ribs are binding to the vertebral column without any exception. All are binding to the vertebral column. One more. All ribs which are binding to the which binds to the vertebral column which binds to the vertebral column. Are bicephalic. Remember, our ribs are bicephalic only on the dorsal side, not on the ventral side. This has only single head. A rib has only single head on the ventral side. But on the back side, all twelve pairs of ribs are bicephalic. 
R always of ellipse R by sub R. And one more. One more. The ribs, all the ribs are binding to the vertebral column. All ribs which are binding to the vertebral column are by sub R. Okay, this is all about the ribs. Total number of ribs are yeah, 12 pairs is equal to 24. Among us 12 pairs, first 7 are true, remaining 5 are false. First 7 pairs are true and also vertebral sterna. Remaining 5 pairs, among the 5 pairs, 8th and 9th and 10th pair of ribs are, even though they are false and also the vertebral corner because 8th, 9th, 10th pair of the ribs are attributing the 7th pair of ribs with the help of a cartilage. That cartilage is the end cartilage. So, remaining 2 pairs, 11th pair, 12 pairs are called as the false as well as free and also floating ribs. I am coming to last point. The number of the ribs, the number of the bones, total number of bones in the Present in the rib cage of man are how many? Before I discuss about the number of bones in the rib cage, what is the rib cage? Rib cage means 12 pairs of ribs is equal to 24, single sternum plus 1, 25, and the ribs are attached to only the thoracic vertebrae. So, thoracic vertebra sternum plus ribs is equal to rib cage. Therefore, number of the bones in the rib cage of man are how many? The rib cage is equal to, rib cage is formed by 1 sternum, sternum is equal to 1 bone. Ribs is equal to 24 one pairs and thoracic vertebrae. Thoracic vertebrae. Only thoracic vertebrae because ribs are touching the thoracic vertebra. They are 12 number of thoracic vertebrae. Therefore, number of the bones in the ribcage of man are how many? The ribcage of man contain 1 plus 4, 5 plus 2, 7, 37. Number of bones in the ribcage of man are 37. Sternum, ribs, thoracic vertebrae. Sternum, single bone, ribs, 24 bones. Thoracic vertebrae are 12 number, totaling 37 number of the bones in the so that I have discussed about the all bones in the axial skeleton. Number of bones in the axial skeleton are 80.